Welcome back to the series Hypercar Updates, where we talk about the news, rumors, and just general topics from Hypercar and GTP. This is episode 7, and I will be going over the details from the month of August in 2023. On this episode of Hypercar Updates, we will talk a lot about drivers joining Hypercar and GTP, an update on Isolto Fraschini's Hypercar debut, and the new Toyota Hydrogen prototype revealed over the Le Mans weekend. And besides those topics, much more will be discussed. So without further delay, let's get into this. I would like to begin this episode by talking about the Porsche 963 and its recent victory at IMSA's Road America event. Porsche last won in IMSA's GTP class back at the Grand Prix of Long Beach in April, with a number 6 car driven by Matthew Jaminet and Nick Tandy taking the win ahead of the number 25 BMW. But finally, the number 7 car driven by Matt Campbell and Felipe Nazar has taken victory for Porsche. Before the race began, the number 7 Porsche 963 inherited the race pole position from the number 31 Action Express Racing Cadillac. That car crashed in the early morning session. At the start, Matt Campbell led the GTP field in the number 7 Porsche, and by the end of the first lap, he was beginning to break away from the rest of the entries. The number 7 car truly dominated the whole event. They were so far ahead of everybody else in GTP. When Matt Campbell and Felipe Nazar were in the car, they too were having great management on fuel and tires and were consistent on keeping ahead of the rest of the entries. They also did a great job with managing the traffic, maneuvering around cars with ease, where other entries had difficult time trying to get past the slower entries. Even though the car was quite dominant, the number 7 entry became under threat from the number 60 MSR Acura driven by Tom Blomquist. And in those final 30 minutes, it was very intense to see who would win the Road America race, Acura or Porsche. Although Nazar was able to keep Blomquist behind and take victory for Porsche Penske Motorsport at Road America, the number 7 car truly had an amazing race. And I'm curious to see if Porsche will be able to continue this form as we come into the final two rounds of GTP at Indianapolis and Road Atlanta. Moving on and silly season has officially begun for the WEC hypercar class and the IMSA GTP class, as many drivers are transferring to these categories in 2024. Let's take a look at the list of driver switches. To start things off, the announcement of Tom Blomquist leaving IMSA full time. Blomquist is set to drive the full season of the IndyCar Championship with Meyer Shank Racing meaning he will not be a full-time driver for the MSR Acura team. Over at Cadillac, Action Express Racing confirmed that Alexander Sims will be leaving the team, and current third driver Jack Aiken, who helped the team to secure victory at the 12 Hours of Sebring, will join alongside Pipo Durrani in the number 31 Wheeling Engineering Cadillac. Meanwhile, Wayne Taylor Racing confirmed that the two drivers for the second ARX-06 will be Louis Delatraz and Jordan Taylor. Both drivers have raced for WTR in the past, with Louis Delatraz racing this season as the third driver for the team and Jordan Taylor, of course winning the 2017 Rolex 24, and his father, Wayne Taylor, owns the team. Over in the WEC, it's now been confirmed that formerly E Envision driver Robin Freintz will be joining the WRT BMW squad in 2024. As time goes on, the driver transfers will continue for 2024, but as of right now, this is the list of drivers going in and out of GTP and Hypercar from the month of August. Speaking of drivers, and even though this isn't for a full-time drive, drivers such as Jensen Button, Joseph Newgarden, and Lawrence Vantor have been confirmed to race at Petit Le Mans, the final race of the IMSA Championship. The final race of the 2023 WeatherTech Championship will likely have more than two drivers in the top category of GTP, so racers like Jack Aiken and Louis Delatraz will likely join the GTP lineups. Jensen Button will be joining JDC Miller Motorsports, so he will join alongside Mike Rockenfeller and Tymon Vanderhelm. Jensen, who's the 2009 Formula 1 World Champion, will be making his prototype return for the first time since 2018 when he raced in the WEC with SMP Racing. 
Meanwhile, the most recent Indy 500 champion, Joseph Newgarden, will be joining the Porsche Penske crew, driving the number 7 car alongside Matt Campbell and Felipe Nazar. Joseph has connections to Penske, since he races for the team in the IndyCar Championship. It's going to be interesting to see how he'll adapt from IndyCar to IMSA, since one is a single-seater racing series, where the other is a prototype endurance racing series. Finally, there's Lawrence Vantor. Vantor is going to be driving the number 6 Porsche 963 with Matthew Jaminet and Nick Tandy. Vantor already races the number 6 car in the WEC, so he's already familiar with driving the Porsche 963. In other news, Alpine completed their very first test at the Paul Ricard circuit with their LMDH prototype. In an interview with Bruno Fama, the vice president of Alpine Motorsports, he stated that it was a positive test for Alpine and their LMDH prototype. The first session is the culmination of months of work by the Alpine racing teams and our partners. Our initial assessment is satisfactory with a fairly high mileage that has enabled us to conduct our program step by step. In these early stages of development, the priorities are to validate the fundamental systems and work on reliability while beginning to fine-tune the prototype. Alpine are looking to take their hypercar to the top step of the podium at the 24 Hours of Le Mans for the first time since 1978 when they won the classic event. Alpine, in partnership with Signatech, will continue to test the A424 LMDH, and they are scheduled to test once again at the Aragon circuit in Spain in the month of September. Alpine was not the only manufacturer testing their new prototype, as Lamborghini's new hypercar participated in two major tests. Earlier this year, Lamborghini unveiled their new prototype, the SC63, that is based around the LMDH regulations. Lamborghini is expected to make their debut in 2024 in both the WEC and IMSA. Earlier this month, Lamborghini took to the Imola circuit with the SC63 decked in a carbon-based livery, no official livery for the 2024 championship. This was a productive two days of testing for Lamborghini, and all three factory drivers, Danny Kvyat, Mirko Borolotti, and Andrea Caldarelli, all tested the SC63 LMDH. They most recently took to the Paul Ricard circuit, in which they showed off the official livery for the SC63 LMDH. Unfortunately, at Paul Ricard, there wasn't a lot of testing completed by the SC63, as the LMDH prototype was involved in some sort of incident. I don't have information on why this happened, but what I do know is that the incident was at turn 11. I wouldn't take anything from this incident, after all, it's just testing. The team will fix the car and get it back out on track for the next test before the SC63 hits the ground running for its debut at Qatar in 2024. This is a question I get asked a lot and I'd like to discuss it. What happened to the potential De Tomaso project that was rumored to return De Tomaso to the 24 Hours of Le Mans? A while ago, there was a rumor circulating that the boutique Italian brand was considering a debut in the hypercar class sometime in the future. This was just a rumor though. It was never confirmed by De Tomaso, the WBC, and so on. This was just a potential possibility of De Tomaso entering hypercar. A lot of people were thinking that the potential hypercar to go over to the category would be the P900, De Tomaso's recently unveiled hypercar. But this would likely not happen because if De Tomaso decided to join with the P900, it would have to be modified to fit the Le Mans hypercar regulations. Earlier this year, there were hints describing De Tomaso revealing an announcement at the Le Mans Classic on a potential hypercar project, but nothing really happened, and so those particular rumors were basically false. I wouldn't rule out a hypercar project from De Tomaso and a return to the 24 hours of Le Mans, but to be completely honest with you, I don't see this happening soon. Now, one project that's looking very likely to be confirmed by the World Endurance Championship is Isotto Fraschini's hypercar. The Italian brand is continuing to test the Tipo 6 LMH Competizioni, and all the news coming from them is just getting better and better. 
As of right now, Isotta Fraschini is targeting to get at least one entry confirmed for the 2024 WEC, though there's potential for a second LMH from Isota. October is the next homologation process for the World Endurance Championship, and Isotta Fraschini are targeting to try and homologate the car there. Now let's talk more about that second hypercar, as the first one will be from Vector Sport, the second one will likely be another team running it. That's of course if Isota Fraschini can get that second car into the WEC and also get a team to run that car. I think priority one is to get that first Vector Sport hypercar into the WEC. If they can do that, that would be a huge accomplishment. There is news around Ferrari and specifically around one of their Formula One drivers. And that's because Charles Leclerc wants to race the 24 Hours of Le Mans with his brother in the 499P Ferrari. Leclerc attended the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2023 to support Ferrari, not as their driver though. He watched as the 499P made its Le Mans debut and won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2023, bringing Ferrari to 10 victories at Le Mans. After speaking with Motorsport.com, Charles Leclerc admitted that he wants to race with Ferrari at Le Mans with his brother Arthur. It's definitely something I want to do one day, and with my brother for sure, but I don't know if this will happen. Charles drives for Ferrari's Formula 1 team and is a 5-time winner of Formula 1. His brother currently is with the Ferrari Academy driving in Formula 2. Formula 1 is a very different sport from the WEC but a numerous amount of drivers have proven that it is possible to do both. Just look at Antonio Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi competed with the Alfa Romeo Sauber team from 2019 till 2021. Then in 2023, Ferrari signed him for the WEC, driving the number 51 499P. In fact, that was the very same car that won the 24 Hours of Le Mans overall in 2023. For next season, Ferrari will likely retain all six of their drivers as the full-time racers in 2024, so if Charles and Arthur want to race sometime in the future, it will likely have to be in a third Ferrari 499P. Maybe that's through the factory AF Corsa team or a customer entry, maybe from Richard Mill. I guess I'll leave this question up to you. Do you think Charles and Arthur Leclerc will one day race the 24 Hours of Le Mans driving maybe one of the Ferrari 499Ps? Well, let me know down in the comments. In other news, there is a driver switch for the six hours of Fuji at Peugeot. Number 94 Peugeot 9X8 driver Nico Mueller will not race in Japan. He has unfortunately suffered an injury with his collarbone and we wish him all the best of luck on recovering. Mueller will likely return for the eight hours of Bahrain, the final race of the 2023 season. His replacement is Stuffel Van Dorn, a former Formula One driver for McLaren and a Formula E champion with Mercedes. Van Dorn is the current reserve driver for the Peugeot team and will make his debut as a driver for the 9x8 hypercar at the six hours of Fuji. He will drive the number 94 car with Loic Duval and Gustavo Menezes. Van Dorn last raced in the WEC with Jota Sport in LMP2, but he last raced in the top category previously known as LMP1 in 2019. He drove for the SMP racing team and took third position overall at the 24 hours of Le Mans with the number 11 car. Our final topic we will discuss is about the Toyota Hydrogen Prototype that will one day race in endurance racing. Let me make this clear, this car is not the GR020, the supposed replacement for the Toyota GR010 which races in the hypercar class. No, this car is called the GRH2 Concept, which is Toyota's hydrogen prototype that will hopefully make its debut in 2026. This car was revealed over the 24 hours of Le Mans weekend in 2023, and Toyota say that it will be a hydrogen-powered prototype, as it states in the name. But what's interesting is that this potential prototype will not be racing in the hypercar class. This is for the new WEC hydrogen category, which should make its debut in 2026. It will probably race alongside the Toyota GR010 or GR020, whichever car Toyota has in the hypercar class. 
At the moment, the specifications for this car are limited, but we know it does have a hydrogen engine and a hybrid. In general, Toyota has had huge success in the hydrogen car market for the normal everyday road car, so it's no surprise that the Japanese mark wants to get involved in the new WEC hydrogen class. It's not officially confirmed that the hydrogen-powered Toyota prototype will race at Le Mans and the WEC in 2026, but once we get to the point where the WEC unveils the hydrogen category's debut, I'm sure Toyota will be right on the top of that entry list. So that completes episode 7 of Hypercar Updates from the month of August in 2023. Which topic interests you the most? Well, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for following along. If you want to see more endurance racing content, especially on IMSA and WBC, make sure to hit the subscribe button to the left. Also, check out one of the suggested videos I put to the right of your screen. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.